but you may be wondering where I am and why this vineyard is so exciting. Let's just have a look. So I've got the wind behind me. You can hear the wind. It's a north wind and that's behind me at the moment. So here I'm facing uh, south. So over in that direction behind these amazing hills covered in Gary countryside is the Mediterranean and the Roussillon. So if I pan around here, we've got Mediterranean, um, the Roussillon, Perpignan in that direction. But as you can see, we're really in the middle of the Garrigue. So it's wonderful hills. We're at about 350, 400 meters. Just behind me there, you can see the Tosh mountain just peeking out uh, with the wind turbines on it. I'm having to hold the phone because <laughs> it's so blowy. Um, the wind turbines must be having a good day up there today. So that's the Tosh mountain behind there at 900 meters. And then just panning around, you can see this local scrub Gary countryside behind that so I'm full on in the wind that's and it's a north wind so over there is Carcassonne direction so we've got Carcassonne over there and pan round and here we've got just the lovely Garrigue and the Narbonne and the Languedoc so basically I'm in the middle of the Garrigue I'm 20 minutes drive from Touchon a, a little tiny track towards the Narbonne direction and it's absolutely freezing uh, which is actually quite good for the grapes but that north wind which we're so pleased to have back is really really chilly and uh, my hands are like having problems holding the phone this morning because they, they're sort of chilled off right back to the ramble back to the vineyard I say I'm not going to be rambling too much because of the slow speed of the um, camera but look at this soil okay can you see that it's absolutely amazing it's this is what we call schist Oops. see that it's schist and schist is basically like crumbly slate and the vines absolutely love it because their vine roots can get through this uh, the rocks and the schist because it's all quite crumbly so it's like crumbly slate the vine, vine roots can get through that and get down to the water and the minerals below look at that just lovely schist and let's take a look at the vineyard itself so this is um, it's actually one of Jean Marc's vineyards, uh, which comes into my winery. Uh, so I rent this vineyard off Jean Marc. It was his dad, Roger, who planted it initially in the 1960s. And then when Jean Marc uh, took it over from his dad, Jean Marc ripped it up and replanted it. I'll explain why in a minute. But let's just take a look at what grape variety this is today. Now we did spot this grape variety yesterday very quickly in my vineyard. There were just a couple of tiny um, vines of this yesterday amongst the Grenache Gris. So I'm just trying to hold down a leaf which is like flapping in the wind and you see this is the easiest way to recognize this um, because it's got that lovely tinge of like almost pink brown muscat yeah Tony is muscat lady littler you got it too this is muscat isn't it and it's just absolutely lovely it has lots of these tendrils seems to have more than the other grape varieties muscat and uh, we'll look at the jobs we've actually got some people up here working we've got the team up here so we'll look at what they're doing but just a word on the muscat grape, grape variety itself and why did John Mark replant so there's hundreds of types of muscat in the world it's probably one of the oldest grape varieties um, and in our area the main ones are muscat d'Alexandrie or muscat petit grain so Alexandrie or gros grain has big uh, grapes and Petit Grain has little grapes and it's actually the Petit Grain which produces the superior quality. So Roger when he planted it, he planted it to make uh, a sweet VDN, Vin du Naturel, Muscat, a Muscat de Rivesaut and you could have some Muscat Petit Grain and some Muscat d'Alexandrie so he planted it approximately half and half. Uh, when Jean-Marc took it over, obviously for Jean-Marc that wasn't good enough for Jean-Marc, so Jean-Marc decided to rip it up and to plant 100% Petit Grain, so the superior smaller berries uh, that produce such a lovely aromatic 
wine. So this is about 0.8 of a hectare. Again, any questions you have, please put them down in the bottom question box so I can pick them up later on. But this is 0.8 of a hectare. You can see planted, um, it's about, well, it's two meters wide. So Jean-Marc can get his nice modern tractor down there. So easier to farm. And he planted it about 20 years ago. So about 20 year old Muscat here. So Muscat Petit Grain. Um, now, a bit of a confession here is I don't really like Muscat. Muscat is definitely not my favorite grape variety, probably because it's so aromatic and because locally they drink it as a VDN or a fortified sweet wine. So when you're drinking like Muscat, which is so delicate and beautiful, but then you've got a real dollop of alcohol in there, oh, it has to be over 15% and 100 grams of sugar. So it's a sweet uh, natural wine, natural in the sense that the sugar is the natural sugar from the grapes. It really, you know, it just doesn't, I don't know, it's too delicate a grape to treat like that. So we've created our own special Muscat, which is more based on the Italian style, which is very delicate, only 10% alcohol, but still sweet. It's absolutely delicious, delicious summer drink. And it took us a while to find the best way for us or the style that we preferred, because again, going against all traditions in this area, anybody who has Muscat around here, they make the VDN. Uh, have any of you tried? Uh, v I call it VDN, which is Van du Naturel Muscat de Rivesaut, or Rivesaut Muscat. So Muscat de Rivesaut, uh, Rivesaut, a village down the road, uh, that's where the name comes from. But in actual fact, as in France, you don't have to live in Rivesaut, as in France often, you don't have to live in the town to make Muscat de Rivesaut. You can actually live in about 99 other villages in and around uh, Rivesaut. So a speciality of the PO or the Pyrenees Orientale. But again, something I don't like, I have very bad memories of Muscat de Rivesa actually, because in the village fets in the summer that last all weekend, the only wine that they served um, when I first got here, which was like 25 years ago now, but it was, it was either beer or Muscat de Rivesaut. And it is extremely easy to drink. So you can just imagine uh, the headache the next morning after too much Muscat de Reeves out. So just looking at, why well, if the drying wind is a problem, why don't you plant a cover crop? Yeah, so I just picked up a question there, it's coming up. So uh, why don't we plant a cover crop down here, uh, down the rows? Um, the problem is water. Um, well, there's two problems. One of the problems is the competition with water, that if we planted um, something, a cover crop down here, it would be in competition with the vines. I know you can get cover crops which take little water and then they, they die off or you plough them in in the summer so there's no competition. But it is something we're looking at. We need to buy the actual machine that would then sow the grain so that we can do it properly. So we wouldn't just do it on a couple of vineyards because of the expense of buying that machine. We'd have to look at using it as general policy in our vineyards. And that's not always easy um, because of the, well, as you've seen, the, the varying width of the rows. My old vines, it's a horse width apart. John Mark's a modern tractor apart. But you may also have been noticing here, I haven't got a cover crop, but it is sort of covered with branches. Can you see that? So when I first got here, you know, it does look quite worrying, but those of you who were with me and Jean-Marc last week, and you saw him thinning out the vines, well, this is what we're doing here. We're actually taking out the branches so that we're thinning out the leaves we're not thinning, thinning out the grapes in particular, we're thinning out the leaves so that the grapes that remain can get the sunshine that they need on the vines. So we've got the team down here. They're actually taking out, you can see uh, Christine in her pink top down there and uh, Nicola in his dark top. So they're working their way up here, but they're actually cleaning the grape varieties. I'm just going to try and call them, so try and get them up here. I'll get Christine up here so that she can show us what she's doing. So block your ears for a moment. I'm just going to shout. Hold on a minute. Christine! Tu peux venir? Tu peux monter un peu? Christine! Tu peux venir? Oui, 
Right, two, sir, ready. Right, I've stopped shouting now they've heard me. Like, I have to shout so loud because of the wind. So we've got the three musketeers here in the vineyard. We've got Maxime, Christine, they're all doing their hair, getting sorted because they know they're on <laughs> live camera. It's very exciting. <laughs> so uh, I just get them back to work and so you can see what they're doing. Merci et bonjour. Et là vous êtes, voilà, Maxime, Christine et Nicolas. Euh, bonjour, donc en fait je suis en live avec euh, Instagram et je voulais juste montrer aux gens qui nous suivent ce que vous faites. Donc en fait si vous continuez, et moi je vais expliquer, donc vous continuez comme d'habitude et euh, par contre je vais prendre Christine juste pour te poser quelques questions. Donc, ah, euh, <laughs> donc Nicolas est spanish. So uh, we translate into Spanish for him. I can't actually speak Spanish. Uh, Maxime, tu peux lui dire de continuer à travailler. There we go. And they all live in the village. But I just wanted to introduce Christine. Morning, Christine. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Alors, Christine, tu viens de Tuchon. Oui, je suis de Tuchon. De Tuchon. Et uh, ça fait un moment que tu travailles avec uh, nous à Domain uh, Jones. Je, je, je pense cinq ans. Cinq ans, oui. So five. Thank you. Um, so Christine's been working us for five years, but there's a special message from Christine. So do you know that program, The Farmer Needs a Wife in the UK? Well, this is more a question of the wife needs a farmer. Uh, donc j'explique qu'il y a l'émission L'amour est dans le pré en Angleterre. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, just, uh, I just ask uh, Christine what her perfect man would be for any single men out there listening today. Ça serait quoi ton homme parfait si jamais il est là? Ah, uh, she says there's no perfect no, man, that doesn't no. exist. <laughs> Nous sommes simple, gentil, uh, so, qu'il a, qu a un bon truc pour... Uh, Un bon truc, ouais. <laughs> ouais. So it's complicated to explain what she's looking for in two seconds, but just somebody nice, easy going, et qui travaille à la. And who's like nice, and good, stable person. Il faut qu'il fasse, qu'il sait comment travailler la vigne ou le jardin ou. <laughs> so uh, not only do you need to know how to work in a vineyard and in a garden, but you need to know how to do everything, basically. Gentil, but just a nice, easy going. Et le l'anglais, tu parles anglais? Pas beaucoup, non, pas. And perhaps a little bit of French. If you speak a little bit of French, you're easy going. You just send me a direct message afterwards. <laughs> So she can speak a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. But voilà, mais merci. Je te laisse aller continuer. Je te tiens au courant. Hein, si. <laughs> so she's Christine going back to work. Oh, look, somebody already. Tony, you can speak Spanish. Oh, perhaps that wasn't for um, Christine, though. That might have been for Nicola. So let's have a look at what they're doing. How's the time? Oh, we're nearly out of time. So. I'm, I'm going to walk down here quite slowly. Hopefully uh, the signal won't go. Let's go and just have a look at what they're doing. <laughs> Liam can barely speak English, so... Um, <laughs> let's just... Hopefully, I think the image may be a little slow on this, but let's just have a look at what Maxime's doing here. So you can see some wind damage on this side already. This branch with the wind just like that just comes off by itself. But this time I just focus in here on Maxime. So Maxime's just, <laughs> bonjour Maxime. Uh, Maxime's Michelle's son, you know, Michelle who drives the tractor, Mignon. So uh, this is uh, Michelle's son. And let's have a look. So here's the uh, vine before Maxime works on it. So Maxime's just taking off by hand what we call uh, these uh, shoots at the bottom of the vineyard of the vine which really don't we don't need those at all that's wasted energy for the grapes so it takes a few more nice smooth trunk and then the other one donc en fait ce matin tu tu fais que le on fait on fait euh, le pied et les fils et les fils aussi okay so what they're doing this morning is cleaning just the trunks and then they're putting the um, shoots in the wires once they've done the trunk. So they're not actually thinning out yet the leaves on the top bit, which I thought they were doing. So literally just cleaning 
the chunks. There is a proper word for this in wine talk, but uh, perhaps you could, if Rob's out there from Wales, let me know. Oops. Oh, you see that? So the wire came out and he's putting the shoots in the wires as well. And they need to get in there today with this wind. Merci, Maxime. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so back up here and I'll just take a look at your questions. Whew. Such a lovely day. Starting to warm up now. That coffee did me a world of good. Right, quick look at your questions. Mum and Dad, have you made it? I didn't see you come on. I hope you're there in Ashby de Lizish. So let's take a look. So, Lisa, do they make any dry muscat in the area? Um, yes, that is definitely more and more people are turning to dry muscat as the uh, sweet muscat is not that fashionable, the sort of fortified sweet muscat. So you can get dry muscat. We did make one one year, a couple of years back. Again, I just find that dry, I like dry muscat, but I just feel that it should have a hint of sweetness in the wine because it's so delicate and fragrant. Oh, thanks, Delwood, their bud rubbing. Is that what you call it when it's on the bottom of the shoots? Thanks very much for that. Whoop. Literally being blown. So what are the spacing of the vine? Another one from Dalewood. So these are spaced two metres apart by one metre uh, in the rows, if that makes sense. The rows are two metres apart and uh, one metre apart in the rows. So we've got about 4,000 vines up here in total in 0.8 of a hectare. Yeah, water's not a problem in Devon. Um, so one from Arden, uh, Paul, sorry. Um, do you always put the muscat on wires? Um, you don't have to. If you were with us yesterday, uh, do you remember we had just four uh, muscat vines and those muscat vines were just self-supporting as a bush vine, a gobble vine. So they don't have to go on the wires. Uh, the modern plantings tend to be, and uh, modern here is like 20 years, that's modern for Tushong, um, tend to be planted on wires because it's much easier to work. So Jean-Marc put these up on wires so that he can get his tractor through and so that the work on the vines is much easier and quicker to do. Um, and it, I don't know, on the protection with the wind, does it help if they're on the wires to protect them from the wind? Um, I mean, it, it's always pretty windy up here. And I think either way, you still get damage on the vines, but probably less when they're in the wires, as long as you get up here in time. To get those shoots into the wires because you can see here these are what ones that haven't been done that haven't been done so they're really quite long already compared to the ones that have been neatly tucked in here's a row where it's all been neatly tucked in see that so definitely helping and that's quicker to do up here than with the scissors yesterday as well so uh, to cut the tops off. So how sweet um, is our muscat? So surprisingly the muscat that we make so it's 10% alcohol and there is still about 80 grams of sugar in it so it's still relatively sweet um, and that is natural sugar from the grapes so we actually stop the alcohol uh, sorry stop the fermentation before all of the sugar has been fermented out and we find the perfect balance is with about 90 well 80 to 90 grams of sugar but what we do have is a lovely fresh acidity on the end so it's not at all cloying it's not a sticky sweet it's a lovely refreshing sweet wine and we make, I mean, we hardly make any. We make a couple of thousand bottles, like half bottles a year. That's all we make. But for me, it's the perfect, it's just the perfect style for the Muscat grape. So um, that's it for this morning. Thank you very much for joining me. See you tomorrow. Bye. Au revoir. <laughs>